So let's go ahead and we're going to give another expected match. This is for the name. So the name is a string. So we're going to go do a string expected. And what we expect in a name is going to be, we're going to open and, uh, open and close this. Again, we need a caret to show that it's a mathematical function we want it to be able to calculate all the variables so a through z a through z and a period in there and a single quote and a hyphen because you know those things show up in names from time to time and then we're going to make sure that we grab the last value there so we'll put the plus in the in the um, Uh, dollar sign couldn't even think <laughs> and then end that so we're basically ending the information and then we're going to put an if statement here if it doesn't match and if it doesn't match the string the information that's expected in the string in the name field well then we're going to throw out an error message and that error message is going to say Let's see, so we use this variable that we've created, and that error message is going to say, the name you entered does not appear to be valid. And that, all right, moving along. Next thing we're gonna do is the string for the comments. This is a little bit easier. We don't need to do any expected information because this comment section could have a bunch of stuff in it. But we do wanna keep them from not putting any comments or even just putting in a one letter. So we're gonna expect information. So we are expecting a string length in the comments. We want it to be greater than two. So here's the thing. If the string length in the comments is less than two, then we're going to put an error message here. Error understood, understood, underscore message. And you know what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a break after these. Okay. So we'll put a period and put a break in there. That way, when uh, if there's if all three errors come through, they're not all just squished together. They'll have a break in them so that they separate. So if somebody doesn't doesn't do it correctly, all three of these error messages are going to show up. So let's see. Now we need to we need to basically say that if there is any error messages showing, then we're going to show the error message. Otherwise, we're going to show an email message. So I'll, I'll type this out, and you'll see what I mean. If the string length of our error messages basically meaning if there are error messages greater than zero meaning if there's any error messages then we're going to go ahead and kill the script make it stop and we're going to display those error that error messages or whatever they are okay however we're going to do else basically if that's not true so if the error messages are less than zero or less then we're actually going to put an email message in here and it's going to be form details below and we'll create a new line and finish that off all right a few more lines of code to go we're gonna do some sanitizing now this is not gonna be necessary uh, in this because we're not using a database but I want you to have to get into f the habit of sterilizing your your any PHP scripting especially with forms because there's a thing called SQL injection people can put lines of code into your forms that can destroy your databases if you're using them so it's a good habit to create some sanitization and that's going to be a clean string and basically what we're going to be doing is looking for information and stripping it out so that if somebody has put information in there 
it automatically removes it so that you don't have to worry about it coming into your database. So we're going to create a function and we're going to call it clean string. And that function is going to have the variable of string. And in this function, we're going to have another variable, which is going to be an array called bad. And in this array, we're going to put some information here, content type. So what that's going to do is it's going to look for this information. And if it finds it, it's going to strip it out. So what we want to do is we want to return so a replace basically return a string replace it's exactly what it sounds like we're gonna replace uh, bad with a null or no information in the string okay that ends that and we've got the closing bracket here and let's do a little sanitizing with this clean string function in the name, email, and comments field. So email message, which is up here. Okay, so the email message we're going to get is going to be name. Okay, now this is going into the email field. Uh, when you when you get the, when you receive the email, it's going to come in and say name concatenated with a clean string, which means just stripping out any extra stuff, and it's going to insert the variable whatever name they put in there, and we're going to concatenate a new line and end that. So basically, you're going to see name followed by their name and then we're gonna create a new line now this we can just copy and paste and we can replace name with email and we use the email variable and comments and replace that with the comments variable now this is what you're gonna see when you get the email message this is gonna be in the the content area so whatever information that they put in there that's what's going to show up so now let's create the email headers again we're almost finished here so let's see create email headers so let's create a variable for the headers and this is going to be from well who's it going to be from well it's going to be from email from so there's our concatenation so email from and we're going to concatenate and create a new this is going to be a new line basically this is coming down from <coughs> uh, the fields that we've got let's do concatenating so we're adding to and this is these are the headers in your email so this is the area that comes in you know your subject line all that stuff so uh, the reply to we're not going to need to reply to anything because the information will actually be uh, up here in the email message the email that they provided to us is going to be who we're going to reply to so uh, we could still put that in there but you're not going to reply to your own email so it's uh, so we're doing email from we could just do email and they could do we could do a reply to for this variable whatever email address they put in so we could just put that in there that'd be just fine and we're gonna create that new line and this is in our header information so we've got to put that new line in there just like that concatenate that and we're gonna go to the X mailer information this is just some PHP information that needs to go in there and we are going to Put this in here. Concatenate the PHP version. Okay, 
Now, let's go ahead and create this app mail. So when that email comes through, it's going to have email to information. It's going to have the email subject information. Uh, it's going to have the email message information. And we're going to include the headers. So now that all is included when we get an email from your contact form. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of a success email, meaning, hey, everything went through all right. Let's go ahead and, and let them know that we're happy they, they got a hold of us. So what I need to do is get out of my PHP. So I'm going to close that PHP out, and I'm going to put a little comment here that says success message goes here. And this is just going to be standard HTML. So we can put thank you for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. Okay. And let's say, um, let's give it a break. Okay. Now this is HTML, so we're breaking the line here. Give it a break. Please click href, and we'll just do. We'll go back to the form element.html, but you could go back to your home page, whatever you want to do. Here, to go back to the form. <laughs> now, all this takes place with inside that's PHP, but you see we closed our PHP tag here, but we still have this last bracket that needs to be taken care of because it's part of the PHP function. So how do we do that? Well, we open up another PHP tag, close that off, and then we've got our closing PHP tag. That's the great thing about this script is that script can we can open and close it as we need it and in, interject different things within it. So that is it. That is our email. All this information is up here. So, you know, we uh, open up a the contact form. And let's say I don't put anything in the air. Well, here we've got our error messages now. We are sorry. There are errors found with the form you submitted. Boom, boom, boom. And we've got those breaks in there so it can go back. And if we go back, let's say Jaffe and we'll put blah 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 which is not an email and send email we'll look email comments so that is basically how that's done and uh, in fact I don't know why I did that you can just reset the form there and you're all set so that's it if you have any questions or anything like that please don't hesitate to give me a uh, shout out uh, you can contact me on my website obviously uh, through a contact form that's on there. And uh, I hope you have a great day.